What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. This is a commercial grade low pressure switch. This one specifically opens at 5 psi and closes at 15. I believe it's the backup for the switchback alarm circuit. It has a built in quarter inch brass female flare. This one's cracked. Here's a close up shot. Here I have the new pressure switch. It's the exact replacement part number. Comes with a new harness, which is a three prong plug that can only go in one way. And it has the built in brass flare female fitting. So there's another quick verification before we take it out. This brass is not fixable and the, the part must be replaced. Normally this would be simple. Let's close the access valve, but this one's all screwed up. I'm going to have to do a full pump down of the rack. And it turns out this switch isn't even hooked up. Someone bypassed it and didn't follow up on their job. So I'm ready to pull this thing out. Harnesses are held by a center screw. Here I'm in the middle of the pump down. I have the liquid line valved off, which must be done downstream of the receiver. If you follow the flow, you can determine that this is the right location on the liquid line. The receiver and condenser are on the roof. This should be tightened tight enough to where in order to loosen them and you've got to use a backup wrench. And it, if you apply too much pressure trying to loosen it, it could possibly snap the weld and blow the charge. So now that I got it loosened and removed, I'm going to put a cap on it, just not to lose any refrigerant. I'll check out that crack right here. That's from over tightening it. Now I'm using leak lock to seal the threads. Even though it's a flare fitting, I'm still going to add some leak lock to it. But you don't have to. In this case, I'm applying it on the female threads. Usually I like to do it on the male side but it really doesn't matter as long as you don't get any down there by where, by where the Schrader depressor is. I'll take the cap back off and let that little bit of built up pressure fade away. I also did valve off the suction line uh, right outside of the rack to isolate the rack from the rest of the suction circuit. Put it on there and make sure you just get it hand tight. Don't cross thread it for God's sake. And then once you got it on there good enough, you can need to use a backup wrench, of course, tighten it good and tight. And make sure that you apply the same amount of pressure towards the way you're turning it against the wrench. I like to apply my pressure between the wrenches. I'll show you guys that another time. So there it's mounted. Here's my controller. I'm going to open the suction line back up. Which these things are, are manly. you got to really put some force into them sometimes. And then this one. I'm always intimidated. That's, I don't like opening them at one time. I open them just a little bit, which it really doesn't even matter now that I think about it. So there I go. I open it all the way. It takes a minute, about a minute, maybe 60 seconds or so, for the pressure to get up high enough to where it starts kicking on compressors. Now these racks the way they work is they 
maintain suction pressure. You see we got the target of 48 over there. So it's going to stage compressors on and off as it needs to to maintain that 48 degree or 48 psi pressure. So if we have more circuits open, it's going to be harder to maintain that pressure and as the circuit starts to close down, compressors can stage off and it's no problem. And then I always need to check my work. I'm supposed to need to check Make sure you got no leaks, even if you know you don't, which I knew I didn't, but still, no leaks. And then there's my little plug. Put it in there, tighten it up, but don't strip it. Don't over tighten it. Just until it stops, that's all you gotta do. So then I just need to wire it in, which, don't try this if you're not comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it, so it doesn't bother me. Just do one side of the switch, making sure you're holding the other live wire. And then you do the, the other one, and then voila. It's on. And wired in. So the circuit was a little bit low, obviously, we had a leak, so I just I finished adding my refrigerant to it, which I didn't include in this video. And wrap everything up. And I think that jug gets it up to like a 25% receiver. Make sure you put all your caps back on. And that does it. So, thanks for watching, happy Thanksgiving. Sorry, I'm a little sick right now, you can probably tell in my voice. See you guys in the next one.